So, first things first, huh, you crazy animals? There's a, there's a bit of technique when it comes to doing fermented processes. So these carrots are, are let me show you. These are organic, certified, certified organic. I'm just kidding, I don't, I don't know what the certifications are, but there's something that you need if we're gonna make this fermented product, which is gonna be really delicious. You need to clean these carrots, but I wouldn't use this water if I was you. This kills bacteria. Water is typically treated in a sanitary way where they, you know, catch water, however the heck they do, I don't know, in Edwards Aquifer in San Antonio. First rapid mixing process, it changes the pH of the water and it rapidly mixes the water with aluminum sulfate, a coagulant. After that's flocculation. I like that word. After rapid mixing, the water flows into flocculation basins. Where, that's the word of the day, by the way. Where the flow of water is slowed and the flock has time to grow big. Sedimentation. Next, the water flows into sedimentation basins where the heavy flock particles sink to the bottom and are removed. Filtration. Now the water travels through large filters made of sand, gravel, and anthracite. Filtration removes any remaining microscopic particles. Anthracite. Filtration removes any remaining microscopic particles and microorganisms. This is what we want. We want the microorganisms on this carrot that, you know, it comes from the ground and it, it's going to supply uh, our, our fermentation process with uh, the bacteria that are needed to ferment these babies. And that's why you, I wouldn't suggest using this. I'm going to suggest using distilled water instead because the last section here it says about water treatment is that the water is then disinfected to protect it against bacteria. Apparently what the Charleston, South Carolina water system uses is chlorine dioxide, a combination of chlorine and ammonia called chloramines to disinfect the water. Fluoride is also added. I don't want that in my food. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, dunk these bad boys in a water bath. And then I'll just gently scrub them with the water that I got here. And uh, I, I believe this to be very important, so. There you go. Just, you know, get enough to get dirt off of there. And uh, that's going to do it. What you want to do also is you want to make sure that your hands are clean. And you can use, you know, um, soap and water. It's not really going to hurt it too much, you know. But the good part is, you know, is that you got that bacteria that's come from the ground where the carrot was plucked. I know that may sound disgusting, but bacteria is actually your friend, and I plan to go more in depth than this. Hello, and welcome to this YouTube channel. I'm Adrian, and I'm going to be doing a host and a slew of things. Most of them are going to be stuff that I really enjoy doing, like cooking, uh, using processes like fermenting. Maybe I'll do music eventually, but this is what I plan to do today. And, um, uh, you know, I'll probably have multiple channels, really. This one I'm going to dedicate to cooking. So stay tuned for this, guys. Does com do you think kombucha counts as cooking? I think it does. I think it counts as fermenting. So we're going to do that. I'm going to do that. You and me gonna do that um, yeah. here's the first thing I got uh, planned out for us you're gonna take some organic carrots some jalapenos garlic which I love I could eat raw and I could also eat ginger raw too and ginger and we're gonna turn this into something really delicious very simple thing to do very cheap and we'll go over prices on this stuff as well so stay tuned 
So here we go. I'm going to give you some advice on cutting carrots because they're going to need to get into the jar. And um, they're going to need to be about the same uh, equivalent sizes. Now, this looks completely different from this. Huh. I mean, so, you know, that's the, that's the point of chopping them up. They need to ferment at the same rate. And that's why we're doing it. So here's the, here's the tip that I got. Get one carrot and then mark it about you know how long you want it and let's see let's find that cut there and then we're gonna cut all our other carrots about the same size so here's your mark and then here we go So that took no time at all, right? <laughs> These bad boys go in the jar, just like this. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut up a jalapeno or two, and I'm gonna make these spicy. So I'm gonna leave the seeds in here. I'm just gonna cut them in half like that. I'll leave the seeds intact. And you're gonna cover your carrots. By shoving the jalapenos on top and letting it uh, push the carrots down so they don't float up because there's gonna be water in here. Let's see, focus. Ooh, yeah, it looks nice. So we'll put two of them cross uh, section. It doesn't really matter if you have this in there or not. You're not really going to eat it. So there we go, cross sectioned off. And look, it's a good cap. You know it's a good cap because if you shake it, nothing's coming out here. So this is ready to be fermented. Um, but what I like to do is I like to put a little bit of garlic in there as well. So I'll add some garlic. A couple cloves here. Just, mmm. 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 Great way to take out some frustration you don't really have to peel them actually all these throw that in there the reason I like to peel is because I don't want to mess with it afterwards I mean, I actually like to eat the garlic, so that's why I'm peeling it. Um, I love fermented garlic. It's really delicious. Um, and this is coming from a meat eater as well. Oh, geez, that's not embarrassing. So we make quite a mess, or I do, whenever I do uh, anything, really. It's just the way to do it. So boom, boom, boom. So I neglected one thing uh, we're going to need is salt. That's going to be part of the process of covering these babies with water. So what you want to do is you want to get a tablespoon per every quart. This is a quart. I mean, well, it's like a hmm, two pints and a quart. Yeah, I'd say that's a quart. So you want a tablespoon. And it does matter what salt you get. See how this is sea salt? You don't want iodized. Uh, they process that. They make it K2 
chemically, so the less chemicals, the better. Now, kosher salt will do, rock salt even. So just throw that on top there and look at this. I'm gonna do salt bay. I just did salt bay all over the place. Man, man, salt bay. Man, you made it popular to be messy or whatever. Anyways, he took that he took that move from me, by the way. But there's the salt on top. You're gonna pour it, the water in there until these bad boys are all covered up. And the process of fermentation requires zero oxygen which is an anaerobic chemical reaction anaerobic means without oxygen like space space is anaerobic we could ferment carrots in space because there's no oxygen i'd like to see how that happens but i'd also like to see ants in space so if you know any astronauts tell them about this see what they can do see what they can whip up but we're gonna take our lid afterwards and I'm going to show you here uh, there is no vegetables above the water no vegetables above the water Ooh. All right. and then uh, after that you're pretty much done just wait for two days And uh, you actually have a pretty cool looking jar here afterwards. It's pretty. You can take your little Instagram pics and whatnot. And uh, it's pretty. Set it on your grandma's counter or something. I mean, look at that. Like, who doesn't like to see that? You know, vegetables. Mm. At least, you know, it'll make you want to eat them, really, because this is a really tasty process. Here, let me show you the other one. The other recipe. So what I generally like to do is I like to take my ginger from the produce section. These are actually in season. We're about coming on summer right now. So this recipe, I'm a fanatic on ginger. So I'm going to peel and cut up tiny pieces. I'm going to say I'm going to do three tablespoons. So, let's do this. This is about three tablespoons of ginger. I'm just gonna chop these bad boys up. I'm gonna chop up the little slices of ginger, and this one's a little fresh. So about two tablespoons of ginger, and uh, that was, I really like garlic. I'm never gonna put less garlic than that. That was about uh, five cloves of garlic. Put these in there. I'm gonna put my little odd ends in there too. And on this one, since I'm not going to be using jalapenos, I'm going to use stubby ends of my uh, carrots here to hold down the fork. Because you, remember, you got to have that. You got to have. You got to have the carrots not touching the air. They got to be outside of the air. They gotta be underwater, basically. They gotta be anaerobic. They gotta be in space, man. <laughs> Ants in space. My brother laughed at that concept. Uh, here, we're gonna need the brine again. Remember, a tablespoon per quart. Top it off. 
And that'll be that. Leave a little room here because it's going to start to fizz. I'm going to dump some of this water out. It displaces... I don't know. I don't know what you call it. Room? It takes room to ferment. And that's probably number one necessity in fermenting is room. You need room to do it. You're going to want to put this in both of these. You're going to want to put both of these in a dark place with the lids not quite capped tightly I would I would just say snugly in case you forget them they will blow up on you these will build gas these are bombs don't ever forget that these are bombs and I would rather you be scared to open them every day than forget that these are bombs because glass will go in everywhere oh dang it I cursed there goes monetization. All right. Here we go, slightly on, and then put them in a cabinet, and then you're ready to go in two days. Um, I would check these every day. Unscrew the lid a little bit, and hear the, go, hear the, the air come out, go and then right back. Right back. Not, not tightly, though. Remember that. 